Hey, what is up, everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 15 of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video and the next video, we're going to touch on the session players in Logic Pro. And in this video specifically, I'll give you a quick rundown of the drummer session player, which is a really helpful tool that can generate acoustic, electric, and auxiliary percussion patterns that can follow the tempo and groove of your song. You can actually set up drummer to follow the groove of another MIDI instrument or an audio recording. And then in the next video, I'll go over the session bass player and session keyboard player, which are brand new to Logic 11, along with the chord track, which also is a new addition in Logic 11. So in this video, we're just going to focus on drummer and we'll also explore drum kit designer, the main instrument that is used for the acoustic drum patterns in drummer. Before I get into the tutorial, though, let me quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate file storage and collaboration platform made by music producers for music producers. You get secure file storage for your stems, multi-tracks, and full DAW sessions. But unlike other file storage services like Dropbox, your collaborators can leave timestamped feedback on your projects. You can even manage royalty splits and draw up contracts with your co-producers, create custom inboxes to receive files from remote clients, and Boombox even has a set of creative AI tools that you can use to assist you in your music making. You can generate MIDI musical ideas, it can assist with writing lyrics, and there's even a built-in stem splitter and vocal removal tool. As a promotional tool, you can create your own custom artist page or create shareable private or public playlists. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so let's start off with drummer just to sort of keep the groove. So I'll just create a new track. And if you go over to the session player track, you'll see your three options, drummer, bass player, or keyboard player. Let's start off with drummer. And for the drummer style, you can see there's a bunch of acoustic styles, a bunch of electronic styles, and some session uh, percussionist styles. I'm going to use one of these that's off screen, the uh, pop songwriter, and then I'll just click create. Now, what this does is it opens up the drummer editor. For now, I'm just going to press E to hide that because I want to talk about the drummer region. So let's just pull that up to the top for now. And what you can do with this is you can move the drummer region around on the timeline and it will adapt to whatever material you're using it with uh, as long as you make the drummer follow uh, your other material. And you can just kind of trim this out to expand uh, the arrangement of that instrument. And you'll see that the pad the drum pattern just continues. So let's see what this sounds like as is. Okay, uh, it's all right, but it's not really following what my guitar parts are doing. And my guitar is kind of consistently ahead of the grid. So it's, it's pushing the tempo whereas the drums seem like they're a little more behind the beat. So that's what the drummer uh, editor is great for, what the session player editor is great for. So to open this up, you just double click on any session player region and you'll get the session player editor down here. Now, one thing you can do down here is you can choose presets, but you can see that there are no presets here right now. This is a bug in the current version of Logic. If this happens to you, all you've got to do is just press one to open up a uh, screen set one. And because one is the main screen set, uh, this will just bring up the presets here. I'm not really sure why that happens. It's just a little bit of a graphical glitch uh, that I found in uh, Logic 11 and Logic 11.0.1. Okay, so here you can select your presets. Um, let's try a few of these and see which groove we like most. Try another one and you'll see the whole pattern changes every time. So 
So you can hear that this is a ride cymbal led groove rather than a hi-hat groove. In the drummer editor, you can change that up right here. You can make this a hi-hat led groove, a cymbal led groove, or a tom led groove. I'm gonna go with the hi-hat here. You can increase the intensity, which is going to increase the dynamic overall. You can increase or decrease the complexity, which is going to give us a more complex or less complex pattern. I'm going to pull this up about there. And for each of the kit pieces, you can set a different pattern. So if I want to do more of like an eighth note hi-hat pattern, I can do that. So with these sort of individual pattern presets for each instrument, the really dark notes are places where you'll definitely get a drum hit. The ones that are kind of light gray um, have a like a lower probability of a note being there. And then the ones that are little dots have uh, no likelihood or very little likelihood of a note being uh, dropped there. So I like kind of like this. It's kind of like a eighth note, sixteenth note pattern. You can swing the eighth notes or sixteenth notes here as well if you want. If you want just a completely straight sound, you're going to roll this down to 50 uh, for a bit of a swing. I'm going to put this somewhere between like 58 and like 66. So let's try like 61. So you can hear that that groove works a lot better than the other ones, but it's still not quite lining up with the guitars. So there's a couple different ways we can handle this. One way is to click here where it says follow, and this will give you a whole bunch of different pattern presets you can select for the kick and snare. But what you can also do is down here under this track option, you can choose a track for the drummer to follow. So I can have the kick and snare of the drummer follow the acoustic guitar part. So I'll choose acoustic guitar one there. And one other thing under details, um, you can add more ghost notes if you want more of those. But uh, the really important uh, parts are right here. The feel knob is going to define whether the drum pattern uh, pushes forward uh, ahead of the beat or pulls behind the beat. So if I were to just kind of zoom in here in the drummer editor, if you pull the beat, you'll see that the groove sort of comes back from the bar lines. It's a little late intentionally. It's kind of like a real loose groove. Whereas if I pull this forward, you'll see that the beat's a little bit ahead of the grid. Really, that's what we want here because the guitar parts are rushed a little bit. They are a little bit ahead of the beat. You can make more out of the dynamics. You can make less out of the dynamics. Less dynamics just means that more of the notes will have you know a similar velocity. So you do want some dynamics here just to make things sound more human. And speaking of making things more human, you can humanize the pattern, which will add some just slight uh, timing variations to the groove. So let's see what that sounds like. Now, toward the end here, we just kind of land on a C chord. If you turn off your snap mode and just pull the uh, drummer region or the session player region out just a little bit, you'll get one more note on the downbeat, which will usually be a crash. But you can hear that the crash isn't uh, lined up. And I also don't like the crash that's at bar six. Um, I kind of want to take this crash at bar six. It's kind of a light, soft crash. And then there's one at 10 here. That's a much louder crash. 
I kind of want to flip flop those. So when you want to get into the nitty gritty and fully customize your drummer patterns, the best thing to do is just to convert these to MIDI. So you can right click or control click on any session player region and then go down to convert and then you can select convert to MIDI region. And now we're just purely working with MIDI. There's no session player anymore. And I can come in here and I can customize this pattern in any way I like. So let's uh, change up the crash here at bar six. There we go, that's the crash I want. Remember with MIDI, you can just simply select the note and then hold option and press up or down to transpose the note. Let's come over here to bar 10. That's the loud crash. Let's put this on the soft crash. There we go. So you can hear that the timing kind of falls apart there at the end. And that's because there's like a slight, like a slight slowdown in my guitar part there. The complicated way to do this would be to create like a, a tempo map of my guitar part here and build that into the tempo track. But uh, probably the easier way is just to manually edit some of these MIDI notes to line up with the guitars. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to go to the end here of the drum part and I'm gonna set the playhead up here and find those transients manually. We can just pull things off of the grid. Again, I've got my snap on off. You can pull that back a little bit. And so you can go through and you can fully customize all of these patterns to your liking. So that is Drummer. That's the basics of using Drummer. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than that, but you can always check out my Session Players course if you want to learn more about Drummer. Now, one last thing I want to touch on here with Drummer is the instrument that powers Drummer. I want to talk about using it as a multi-output instrument and also how to use the producer kits. So first, let's talk about Drum Kit Designer. If you select your Drummer track, and you go over to the inspector, you'll see the drum kit designer instrument right here. If you click on that, this will open up the drum kit designer plugin window. Now, one of the really cool things you can do here is you can swap this out for any other drum kit you want, or you can fully customize each kit piece of the drum kit. So if I click on the kick drum, you can see I can select from one of many different kick drums. So maybe I want a deeper, punchier kick like that one. And then maybe for my snare, I want something a little more live and a little more uh, deeper sounding. And then maybe for the toms, I want to adjust the tuning of the toms. I can pull up the tuning, you can dampen them, you can add gain, uh, and you can do this for every single kit piece, including the cymbals. You can even choose different sets of cymbals, different hi-hats. Let's go with the Brooklyn one. Pull up the volume on that a little bit. Let's see what our new uh, customized drum kit sounds like. So one of the things about Drummer is that all of this is coming through on a single track, a single stereo track. So when it comes to mixing, you don't have immediate control of the kick, snare, toms, and hi-hats within the mixer. There's two ways you can approach this. The first way is you can load up Drum Kit Designer as a multi-output instrument. To do this, click on the right side of the Drum Kit Designer plugin, go up to Drum Kit Designer, and select multi-output. So once you've loaded it up as a multi-output instrument, you'll see this plus sign at the bottom, and you can click on that, and you'll see it creates a separate kick channel, a separate snare channel, tom channel, and hi-hat and percussion channel. Now, beyond the fourth track, or the, really the fifth track, there's not gonna be anything else, so you can just hit the minus sign to bring that back. But essentially, like, your cymbals and stuff are gonna play through the main channel, and then the kick, snare, toms, and hi-hat are gonna play through on different channels. So what this does do is it gives you, you know, more immediate mix control of each of the kit pieces. So 
you can add an EQ or other audio effects to each of these channels. We're going to talk more about adding audio effects later in the course if you're not familiar with that. But, you know, for example, with my kick drum, maybe I want to add uh, a channel EQ to this. Maybe I want a little more top end punch. Maybe a little less low end. Okay, so to get out of multi-output mode, all you got to do is load up Drum Kit Designer and Stereo again, and we're back to Stereo. Now, if you want even more control over the kit pieces in Drum Kit Designer, what you can do is come over here to the library, go to Drum Kit, and you'll see all of the Drum Kit Designer presets here. But if you go down to Multi-Channel Kits... These will load up multi-track, multi-channel versions of Drum Kit Designer. These used to be called the producer kits in previous versions of Logic. Now they're called multi-channel kits. So the original kit I selected was Bluebird, and I can select the Bluebird Plus kit. Give it a moment to load up, and you'll see now in the mixer, I can click this little arrow, and then I have all of these individual tracks for that drum kit. Now, this is what's called a track stack. It's essentially like a folder where you can store multiple tracks. And we'll talk more about using track stacks in a later video. But if you open up the drum track stack in the tracks area, you'll see you have individual channels for each uh, kit piece. And if you do this in the mixer, you get the same thing here. So you have overheads, kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, and so forth and so on. You can add individual plugins for each one of these channels, and you can truly mix drum kit designer like a real drum kit. So those are the multi-channel kits that you can select in the library, and pretty much I think every single one of these drum kit designer kits has a multi-channel version that you can pick from, and I think some of these are only multi-channel as well. So just keep that in mind as you are using Drummer. There's a, a lot more to it that's sort of hiding under the surface than you might realize. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.